Hey guys, it's Mathel here once again, and as there has been quite a lot of information coming out about War for the Atlas and the Abyss League, uh, I thought I'd do a bit of a compilation of everything that has um, come out as uh, far as teasers, information, um, uniques, you know, all that sort of stuff to do with that from Grinding Gear Games uh, via the forums, the news posts, and through Reddit. There is a lot of that sort of stuff, and it's really hard to keep track of if you're not paying super close attention. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and compile it all for you, talk a bit about uh, every single little um, announcement and piece of information, and maybe give an opinion or two on that. Because believe it or not, there's only about a week left until the actual launch, which will be pretty damn massive, I think. The expansion looks amazing, the league looks amazing. So uh, let's get that hype train a rolling. Now, as I've already talked about quite largely, the actual expansion is War for the Atlas. Long story short, it is going to be more of an end game uh, centered expansion about the map system, uh, the Atlas itself. Currently, we have Guardians, which there are four of at the uh, tier 16 end game maps. And then there's Shaper as the big end game boss. Basically, that's being doubled uh, to have the Elder, that guy right there, with four other Guardians, and a bunch of extra map bosses, a bunch of extra maps and all that. So it's much more of an endgame centered uh, expansion, as opposed to the previous one, which was mostly just trying to get the leveling process going. There's going to be shaped and Elder items, so a whole new sort of um, item tiers and uh, different bonuses your new map bosses and all of that. So that's just an overview of the expansion itself. We then have the announcement of the Abyss Challenge League. So that will be the Challenge League that coincides with the launch of the expansion December 8th uh, in a week from now. Now this is roughly what it looks like uh, in action. It is going to be similar to Breach, which was our favorite league because you get lots of extra monsters, lots of extra loot and a few extra bosses to fight. And that should be similar in that regard. A little crack opens up, you follow it, it expands. The more you kill, the more spawns, a lot of extra loot, a lot of extra monsters. Uh, so that's going to be uh, probably pretty damn good and very similar to Breach, which we absolutely loved. So nothing really um, wrong with that. Looks pretty damn amazing. Now there will be, um, yeah, as they say, plenty of monsters coming out. There'll be bosses to fight, um, zones to enter if you can or want to. And ultimately you will get a few uh, different items. So there'll be Abyssal Jewels. And the special thing about the jewels is they have new sort of properties, ones that we haven't seen before on jewels themselves. For example, physical damage to spells holding shield um, some extra flat life for example more physical damage so that's you know good for face breakers uh, cold damage to sword attacks just different uh, and new sort of um, mods and properties on jewels that we haven't seen before and they are of course craftable as well your passive tree so where normal jewels go as well as that there is going to be a new belt which has um, one abyssal socket to be able to craft on so it's just a new um, belt base type and that should pretty much be best in slot belt because it's better than any other any of the other implicits potentially with the right jewel and as well as that some abyssal uniques will have uh, jewel sockets so you can actually fit some uh, jewels into so that's also pretty cool stuff the one abyssal unique that has been teased so far are these and they look like similar to uh, Aberath sort of um, boots not quite sure what level 20 death walk is or does yet but sounds like it'll be somewhat similar and then of course has the abyssal jewel socket as well these abyssal uniques will be achievable by going into the abyssal depths so the uh, sort of zones uh, to do with the abyss and you defeat the boss lich bosses and it's going to be similar to a breach sort of action where you do go in get the breach lord kill the breach uh, lord and um, get a new unique for it and then we also have uh, challenges and rewards once again 40 challenges um, when you complete 12 you get the abyssal helmet at 24 you get abyss wings which don't look too special yet, but you know, need a better look at them. And at 36, you get the Abyss Portal effect. Haven't really seen that yet, but there's probably a few teasers going around of that. Uh, we'll just wait and see about that. Could be all right. Not too bad for rewards so far, I think. The next little uh, announcement was about monster density in maps. Now, monster density was nerfed at some point, and uh, it was, you know, some maps were a lot uh, scarcer. Things like Strand, for example, had far fewer packs, and it felt like you're walking through an absolute ghost town sometimes. Um, for this uh, next patch and expansion, they plan to rework monster density in maps so that instead of um, a total amount of um, experience per map, it's more of an experience per hour of running a certain map completely normalized. So every map should, you know, ideally give you the same amount of XP per hour, regardless of how crap a layout it is or how good a layout it is. 
So that will um, then reflect upon how dense the map is for monsters. And uh, they say that they've done a lot of testing about uh, experience per hour and most maps should be roughly equal. So if that is true, then you may see the meta um, largely revolve around farming things that have uh, good divination card drops like Spider Forest for your uh, headhunter cards and all of that. And uh, just maps that you actually enjoy running. Um, so maybe very linear uh, sort of layouts, but um, it's uh, pretty good news for me because that's how I currently play the game. I like to just run maps that I enjoy and I think are good and a nice large variety of maps. So that should hopefully, you know, push you away from having to run the most efficient map possible and there should be a lot denser uh, monsters. So that's a lot more fun to actually blast through with your character. And as well as that, they've uh, rebalanced the map mod so that every rollable map mod now grants a pack size bonus. So uh, instead of just certain um, map mods giving actual monster pack size now all map mods will and that means that uh, the more map mods you have on a map the better the pack size so corrupted maps for example with eight or so properties are going to be pretty insane and uh, something you really want to try and run to get the max out of your map for uh, density and for fun we then were given a boss preview for a new boss in act nine so you have to um, start out by fighting the boss a bit, run through a gauntlet. Uh, the boss itself is the big scorpion dude with um, the chick statue stinger tail. Won't go over this too much. It looks fairly cool and uh, definitely an improvement over the current few boss fights we've seen in Act 9 and should be a good bit of fun. We were then told a little bit about a change for Desecrate because there will be a new Unearth skill gem which has a similar sort of function but it is slightly different because it will be a projectile and you have to attach a GMP for example to uh, still keep up a decent amount of corpses when you spawn them. But basically Desecrate will have its uh, cooldown reduced from 5 seconds to 3 just so it can keep up a little bit and it will still be the premier way of um, spawning corpses that are from the actual map itself and have a higher chance of um, being higher life monsters and uh, things that are better for your detonate dead and detonate dead itself is getting a bit of a rework they talk about here because um, you know double dipping and lots of things have changed in the past and it's not really being used that much anymore so it does now have a whole new um, way of scaling and a new graphic and skill effect which looks pretty damn neat uh, can imagine it's probably going to be a bit of a frame ripper when you do a lot of those and we'll look at that in just a second on another um, preview as well but for, as far as the rework is concerned they say they um, we've split the explosion to two parts, a corpse-based explosion that deals unreflectable secondary damage like all other corpse explosions and a powerful spell explosion that has base fire damage that grows as the gem levels. So they're hoping that it's something you can fully invest in. The area, um, large base area, grows as the gem levels so it increases a lot as you level it up and um, it should potentially be something you can build around and not have to worry strictly about uh, how we used to with Ignite. I think it actually looks really cool and uh, quite possibly might make my second ever detonate dead character at some point because uh, that looks like a lot of fun to explode. Next up is just a few uniques and divination cards that are coming in the new expansion. There are a lot more than this but they've just given us a little bit uh, to preview to start with. And to start with, we do have the Long Winter. It is a Glacial Cascade Threshold Jewel that is uh, going to be pretty damn essential to uh, use in your Glacial Cascade builds. So it says uh, with 40 int and 40 int, so in a radius, 40 int, doesn't really matter. 20% uh, of Glacial Cascade physical damage converted to cold damage, and you can use two of them, meaning you can convert the remainder of your Glacial Cascade's physical to cold, thus having a purely cold Glacial Cascade with only dual socket investments. And as well as that, the Glacial Cascade has an additional burst uh, for each of those jewels. So currently it does, you know, fire out a few circles of um, actual damage that can overlap. Uh, this will potentially mean you can overlap an extra one or two of them, which will uh, still largely depend on your radius and how big the monster is and all of that. But basically it looks like a best in slot jewel that you're going to have to wear with Glacial Cascade. They will be pretty nutty if... Cascade doesn't get nerfed. Now, Cascade is currently pretty strong, not the best clear speed or anything, uh, and it's not the greatest for self-cast because of uh, a few area issues and all that. But for mines particularly, uh, it's got completely insane damage. And to me, this says that there may potentially be a Cascade nerf coming. So uh, get excited, but not too excited because uh, things may change with that one in the future. 
Um, next is Kalissa's Grace. Uh, so these are gloves that have uh, just a bit of int, um, life and energy shield. They're supported by level 18 faster casting. So they're a nice little pseudo five link. And then you gain two crit uh, strike chance uh, that's base crit strike chance for two seconds when you spend a total of 800 mana. Now, 800 mana is quite a lot, but there are builds that uh, can spend quite a lot of mana quite quickly uh, with their spells. And uh, basically, glove slots are usually fairly open for a caster because there's not too much you can get from a glove slot. So you usually just grab some life, maybe some attack speed. Uh, on a pair of sorcery gloves, for example. Whereas this does give you the potential to have a slightly higher uh, window of burst damage, uh, although not particularly reliably unless you really build into the mana portion of it. And I think uh, these can definitely see some use and can actually be put into a uh, caster build quite reliably just to gain a bit of extra burst every now and again. And then there's some unique um, fire shield Invictus Solaris and uh, the way they word it uh, about where you get this, it sounds like it's going to be from that unique map that we've been teased, which is... Um, you know, like solar and lunar sort of thing, and you'll be able to um, choose which one you end up dropping by whatever the mechanics of the boss fights are, I suppose. And ultimately, uh, don't really know too much about it because it triggers level 20 fire Aegis when equipped, and we don't really know what that means yet, but um, could be quite good, could be useless. We'll have to wait and see uh, in the future. We then have a few divination cards that are being added to the game. Um, there's already so many, but hey, here's a few more. Uh, Chin Soul, six out of six. So Chin Soul is not terribly rare, but it is a very useful bow at the moment. So um, for the solo self-founders out there or so, that's a pretty useful uh, divination card being added to the game, I think. Um, Corrupted Jewel for 10 out of 10. That's somewhat interesting. You could get a pretty nice uh, jewel out of that. Unique Corrupted Jewel, that is. So some of the ones that are strictly required for Val skills uh, could be an easier way of farming that there, though it's not terribly hard at the moment anyway. Uh, Left to Fate is probably the most interesting one, a map tier 16, so a guardian map that is unidentified and corrupted. So that means you don't know what mods are on it, and corrupted means there's probably going to be a shitload of crazy mods on it. And because it's a tier 16, that's going to be pretty damn interesting. So you could get a whole bunch of damage mods, some minus max, some reflect, who knows. Uh, that's a tricky one. Even some of my best geared characters will struggle to just randomly run a tier 16 without knowing what mods they are. So that's a pretty cool uh, divination card. Should be... Uh, you know, pretty good for a lot of fun in the old uh, softcore world, I'd say. Probably not very smart to do these on the hardcore realm. And then we have the realm, which is a superior portal. So it's just a portal gem with quality on it. And quality for portal makes it cast a bit faster. So that's kind of useful, I guess. Meganod's Girdle, Corrupted. Not too sure the use behind that one. Not going to be super useful, I don't think. And then um, 9 out of 9 for 30 Scouring Lobs. Scourings are awesome, so hell. If you can farm that uh, conveniently enough, that's a pretty nice one too. We then have a few skill gem and support gem interactions, and it's probably best to just read these out basically and talk a bit about them because they are fairly descriptive. So uh, unearthed to begin with, this skill fires a physical projectile into the ground where you target, creating a corpse you can use with other skills. So similar desecrate. This skill can generate up to 10 corpses and can only shoot one projectile at a time when it is not supported by other gems. To maximize the corpse output, you can combine it with GMP and Spell Echo like they have here. And it's a simple but reliable way to deploy a concentrated cluster of corpses. Great for things like cremation, which is this skill over here. Um, corpses are skeleton archers, which are much stronger than most skeleton archers you'll find in the world. This means they're reliable range specters if you're wanting to play a build that rapidly resummons specters. There may even be a new unique on its way that would facilitate this. So that's uh, teasing it a bit of a new unique as well. Uh, it looks pretty useful for certain things, especially for cremation itself over here, as they say, which does look like a fairly cool skill that I would probably have to try out at some point. So cremation explodes a corpse and it replaces it with a fiery geyser. So here's your corpses, explode them and boom, fiery geyser. This geyser throws flaming shards all around it that deal damage in a large area. You can have up to three cremation effects active at once. So three little volcanoes going off. The skill has a special interaction with additional projectiles. The number of projectiles fired are spread out over each second the geyser is active. So GMP and similar supports are a damage boost 
that also result in more hits and a greater likelihood of hitting an even area around the flaming geyser. So, yep, GMP, possibly Dying Sun, a bunch of stuff like that will be pretty damn good for it. Uh, it looks somewhat effective. It kind of reminds me a bit about Fisher or Volcano from um, Diablo 2. I was always kind of a fan of Fisher. Volcano was always a bit RNG in the way it worked. But uh, hopefully you can get enough projectiles to make this reliable enough or summon enough at once to uh, clear well enough with it. But it looks like a pretty cool skill and I think it should be worth a try. Then have the Spell Cascade Support Gem. So it's just a support gem you attach to your spells which um, reduces the power and size of an area targeted spell but performs the effect three times in a line as an outward moving cascade. So it will give you three of the spells in a line in front of you. This support gem applies to area skills that take place where you target, like Bladefall. It trades damage and total area for repeat applications, allowing for a high damage if you're able to strike enemies at the overlap point. So you can overlap them as well. Most area targeted skills can't overlap more than once, so positioning is important to maximize your damage on key enemies. This support doesn't work on channeled skills and you have to cast it yourself, similar to uh, the restrictions of Spell Echo. It works with corpse skills like the soon to be improved version of Detonator dead. Skills like this have the opportunity for more overlap than standard area skills if you have corpses clustered close together. So with Bladefall and probably just about any of these, it looks like it's going to be damn near mandatory and completely insane, so it really brings back some of the area sort of meta that we used to have. And then with Detonate Dead, it looks really cool. So uh, that's what I was talking about, that I think uh, should be playable and looks really fun to play. Um, because, yeah, look at all those explosions. It's going to be pretty fun to constantly set that off. Um, do that with uh, Cascade, maybe even Echo. And that should um, provide a lot of extra explosions and damage and clear speed. Then have another new skill in Volatile Dead. This skill turns up to three corpses into fiery orbs that chase down enemies and explode. Volatile Dead usually only consumes three corpses with each cast, but with Spell Cascade you can consume a whole lot more quickly creating a ball pit of fiery death or a wave of orbs that will rush at enemies. Not quite sure how practical or useful this will be, but it does look really cool and it could be just a really fun skill to play around with. Hopefully it's got the damage numbers behind it and you can sort of ramp up the speed on them too. And then here's a quick example of spell uh, cascade with desecrate, just the amount of extra corpses you can summon. So that's pretty damn useful for the desecrate um, reliant things. Then we have Storm Barrier. This support gem gives you a projectile barrier while you cast supported channeling skills while also being able to generate power charges when you're hit. The support grants you a 13% less physical damage taken and 12% less lightning damage taken at gem level 20. See he's got the little storm barrier happening around him when he is actually channeling his skill. It is worth using on your primary skill if you really want to mitigate as much damage as possible at the cost of other damage sources. It has as much more it has a much more useful effect on utility channeling skill setups to keep you safer while you're not doing direct damage and generating power charges as a bonus. So that is true if you, um, you know, are just withering to help your chaos damage out. Attaching that is pretty damn useful because you don't need damage mods on that typically, and that's just a sort of um, defense multiplier there instead. We then have something that actually looks pretty damn hilarious in Body Swap. Body Swap explodes your old body and recreates you from a new corpse dealing damage where you were and where you appear. However, this is uh, showing off a totem, whereas otherwise you would um, transfer with a corpse yourself and um, detonate that corpse and then teleport where it used to be as a sort of movement skill. In addition to being a satisfying repeating, repeatable movement skill for crossing the aftermath of a battle or for use with Desecrate, Body Swap can be used with totems and directed with corpse creation skills to create a teleporting team of totems. The fiery explosions will use your totem life to calculate the self-explode, letting you make tough totems that dish out decent damage whenever they swap bodies with your unearthed, un undead, and fallen foes. So, it does look pretty damn hilarious and really in the spirit of Path of Exile of how crazy and ridiculous some of the stuff you can do um, in this game is. Uh, I think this has potential to either be really strong and potentially overpowered or just a complete meme that's a bit of fun to use and just looks hilarious to play with. We'll have to wait and see for that one. And then we have Volley. This support adds two projectiles and lets a portion of your projectiles be fired from adjacent points. So uh, just similar to LMP uh, as in two extra projectiles, but it then fires in a volley next to you uh, parallel with you. The adjacent projectiles are fired from up to four adjacent points, creating a wide line of projectiles. 
This support is a great way to have access to extra projectiles at lower levels and fires tighter clusters of projectiles at long range. They say it's good in Incinerate, Freezing Pulse or Flame Totem, uh, but currently both Flame Totem and Incinerate aren't really too good, so maybe that's indicating there'll be some buffs for that. Freezing Pulse though could be fairly interesting with. We were then also showed a uh, preview of one of the Elder Guardians that we may be fighting, one of the four in our new expansion as well. Uh, so this guy looks pretty damn nuts. Uh, it's a nice, nice to have a big open arena to fight him in for starters, as opposed to some of the other uh, previous fights. So that's uh, good to give you something to work with for all your dodging and all that. For the most part, looks like a lot of dodging. Uh, need some fire resist, potentially some actual physical mitigation if you plan to get hit by a lot of stuff. You then have, I'd say, probably three different phases. Uh, every 25% portals you to a different arena with some extra fancy shit happening uh, like volatile flame bloods chasing you, you have to trigger. Uh, overall, yeah, it's going to be similar to I'd say kind of like a Hydra fight where you do have to dodge a lot of things and uh, it's sort of a one-on-one -on -one interaction in that sense. And then see the, I suppose, potentially last phase here that does get pretty nuts. He's got a new sort of skill that he uses that's really cool there. Uh, there's going to be four turrets constantly going around, pretty constantly by the looks of it. You have to play around as well as that. There's a pillar in the middle for you to uh, use to get around those turrets, or maybe the boss himself. Uh, so pretty interesting, should be fun to do, and uh, I think map mods on this one could become pretty crazy if you let it. So that unidentified tier 16, for example, corrupted map would be crazy. And I'll lastly go over just a few things from the uh, Reddits, basically, that Bex sometimes posts or people fish up. Uh, to start with, we have a wand that's posted, the Poet's Pen. So that's a new unique. Uh, currently usable at level 12. Get plus one level of socketed active skill gems per 25 player levels. So let's say most of us will get three plus levels out of that uh, at level 75 and plus. Of course, four at level 100, which not too relevant for the most for the most part. Um, adds three to five physical damage to attacks with this weapon per three player levels. So near the end game, you will get a fairly sizable amount of damage, something like 90 to 150. Uh, which makes it decent enough to actually attack with. Uh, some decent little attack speed, and then trigger a socketed spell when you attack. So that's similar to, let's say, a Cosbury sort of effect or a Mjolnir effect. Uh, you put a spell in there, there will be a 0.25 second cooldown, just like the other uh, weapons, and you will trigger spells. Now, that sounds pretty damn good to me. So uh, if nothing else, uh, for the end game, if that doesn't end up working out too well, uh, it should be a really nice leveling wand for wanders because currently there's not really a great way of leveling a wander from, um, let's say, 12 to 28. You typically just uh, struggle your way through with some barrage, some power siphon, that sort of stuff, and some leveling uniques, uh, whereas this would help a lot. Otherwise, it does look like it could actually see some serious use in the end game regardless. Uh, we'll have to just build around it a bit. I don't really like to theorycraft too much. I rock rather just actually uh, jump into an item and uh, test it with a whole bunch of other stuff. But I think it definitely has potential. We were then told that Navali, who will be sitting in your hideout, usually will now be able to trade in your divination cards. So that's pretty damn convenient for turning in your cards. Uh, just a small quality of life, nothing too serious there. You won't have to go to Act 4 anymore. So that's pretty good. Uh, the storm bearers, or this is just an example of storm bearers themselves, but bearers in general will now have an updated graphic, so they'll be a lot easier to see uh, throughout absolute cluster fudges, let's just say, um, of beyond and all that sort of stuff, and breach and all that. Um, so you should probably die less to bearers, but there are still definitely ways you can die to them. But this is a step in the right direction, considering how much um, graphical stuff just keeps getting added every expansion, every um, sort of league as well. So that's a step in the right direction. And then the only other thing I really wanted to mention was the uh, Reflect rework. So Ziggy D did have uh, one of the developers, Rory, on his um, stream real quick for an hour or two. And uh, you can see that on his YouTube channel if you want. The main thing that I got out of that was Reflect rework. So Basically, long story short, this guy sums it up. Reflect stays as a map mod, so you will still have elemental and physical reflect on the actual maps themselves, uh, which some builds can still do. Like, let's say, um, not really physical too much. That's kind of hard as a physical build. But your scions with elementalist or elementalist themselves, 
uh, with enough reflect protection can still do early reflect maps but for the most part they are pretty much no go for most early builds and then reflect on res removed altogether and replaced by a nemesis mod that counterattacks with mortars of the appropriate damage type whether it's physical or elemental with a cooldown on them so that they don't shit out uh, thousands of mortar counterattacks if you hit too fast overall that basically is a really good thing for us guys that don't want to build too tanky and want a lot of damage uh, it means that you will be able to blaze through maps and not worry about reflect as much and it's more going to be up to you whether or not you die to reflect rather than your defense sheet or your offense sheet so that's pretty damn amazing and finally we got to you know a point where reflect can be changed and I think that's going to be really good for us and finally the last couple of things to mention are basically the um next week's schedule as for announcements and stuff on monday we will have the abyss league uh, challenges and rewards announced on tuesday balance development manifesto about you know certain balance in the game that's coming in the expansion on wednesday is when we get our patch notes so bear in mind that you shouldn't really be asking what build should i play in 3.1 or um what starter character is good for 3.1 or what can i run in abyss league basically you should wait until the patch notes because you know i could tell you sunder is going to be great because it's been great for a while and then we read the patch notes and it says sunder is now shit so you don't really know that and you really do have to wait for the patch notes before you can jump into thinking about builds so uh, I do uh, advise a bit of caution in that. And then on Thursday, we do have the passive tree and item filter information. That's basically for the um, fine people that are going to turn our stuff into passive trees and hand it over to us through things like path of building and uh, never sync item filters can be updated, that sort of stuff. So not too much to do with us, but we do actually benefit from that in the long term uh, as soon as they can actually get this information. And the last piece of information before I finish up is that they are currently running a promo with Twitch uh, where if you connect your account from Path of Exile, so your Path of Exile account to uh, your Twitch account, and if you watch streams every five minutes that you watch a Path of Exile stream, anyone that's under the Path of Exile uh, tab in the Twitch section, you will have a 1% chance to win one of these helmets. So every five minutes you get a 1% chance to win one of these helmets. Basically all it has done is mean that you can now AFK bot watch um, any stream, quite commonly something like Zizaran's because he streams a lot. So he's really good to uh, watch and try and get your win out of and basically just free hats. A few of them are really cool. So it's not a bad idea to try and get in on this and uh, definitely see if you can win yourself a free hat. Some people are reporting that they've done like 40, 50 hours of pure watching and still no hats. Uh, could be that something's wrong, could be just a little unlucky. Chances are you should get a hat um, a lot sooner than that. So give it a shot and see if you can get yourself a free hat by watching any of these streams. That is roughly all the information I have that I've been given, that we've been given from uh, GGG so far as to the abyss league and the um war for the atlas expansion coming in a week's time i think it's going to be pretty damn amazing uh, i'm pretty excited about it i don't get too excited about games often because uh, i like to keep my hype in check and then you know experience it as it comes and see if it's actually good or not so I take a fairly reserved um, stance towards this sort of stuff, but this looks really good. And every single time uh, they have released something in the past for me for expansions and patches and all that, it's usually been pretty damn good. And uh, this does look very fun indeed. So I hope you guys are pretty excited. Hope you enjoyed the video or found it useful. If not, thanks anyway for watching this part of the video. I'm currently still just playing my uh, Gladiator Reeve character on the uh, Mayhem 10 day race. It's actually really quite amazing. My attack speed is huge at this point and I am really loving this character. It's really kind of built up into an amazing character. So feel free to stop by and have a look um, whenever I'm streaming. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next YouTube video, next Twitch stream and the expansion itself. Thanks for watching, guys, and see you next time.